Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. Just wanted to give you an update. Um, this comes from The Sun. It reads that um, troubled past Quentin Simon's mom, Leilani, troubled. Uh, she tried to overdose with kids nearby and toddler's brother had bruises, the ex claimed. And I'm going to read this article to you, but I wanted to leave you guys with the pictures of Quentin because that's who this is all about after all. All right. So this says, a dad has expressed his deep concern about his son's safety and is questioning everything after his little boy's mom was named as the sole suspect in the presumed death of one of her other children. Police in Chatham County, Georgia, said on Thursday that Leilani is the prime suspect in one-year-old Quentin Simon's mysterious disappearance, and the evidence suggests that Quentin is dead. And it continues with Simon's ex-boyfriend, Cody Wharton, who co-parents their son, Zane, said he noticed bruises on his face after he claimed she tried to overdose while she was depressed last spring, he told the U.S. Sun in an exclusive interview. Morton, who dated Simon on and off since 2011, before they split, said that he hadn't slept since police publicly named her as prime suspect in Quentin's October 5th disappearance. Quote, Zane needs to be with me. I want to make sure he's safe, Morton said. I'm not sleeping. I'm at a point where he needs to be with me. Even now, I'm questioning everything. Is he hurt? Is he, what is he doing? I don't want to get a call saying your son is hurt and going to the hospital. Morton claimed when Simon was allegedly depressed and tried to overdose, he noticed bruises on Zane when he picked him up, but thought the marks were simply caused by him being rambunctious. I don't know what happened. I don't know how long the bruises were there, he said. And when she was talking about overdosing, that scared me because my son was there. But what if she had overdosed and I couldn't get there for two hours? She's always been unpredictable, he added, talking about Simon. But I wasn't worried about Zane's safety until all of this started going on. She was a good mother. I don't know what happened. During the interview, Wharton struggled to find the words to describe how he was feeling as he replayed every perceived oddity in a stream of consciousness that now he realizes might have been red flags. For example, one past summer, he claimed Simon was overwhelmed. And when he picked up his son and all he had was winter clothes, nothing scared me like this. Right now, I want custody. I need to hold my son. I need to see him with my own eyes and make sure he's safe, Wharton said. But he admits getting full custody is not a simple task, as there are a lot of obstacles in his way. Wharton claims authorities told him to fly from New York to Georgia to take a DNA test to prove he's the father, hire a lawyer to get custody through the courts, and legitimize the father-son relationship. It's unclear who is currently caring for Zane and Simon's other child while police continue their investigation into Quentin's disappearance. Nothing scares me like this, Wharton said. I knew my son was going to be taken care of, but I'm not even sure her parents can take care of him. If he was with me, I would give, it would give me a calm mind. He deserves a good life, a life full of opportunity. I feel like he's not getting that right now. After their off and on relationship, Wharton and Simon split, but co-parented their son, Zane. Simon has since been in a relationship with Danny Youngkin and has had two other children with him and another man. Wharton said that she seemed fine when they spoke last month. Quote, she was saying that she was excited about moving to a new house and seemed to have her head on her shoulders. And now this happened, he said. He claimed that he didn't know Simon's grandmother filed legal papers to remove Simon and Youngkin from her Savannah home. Her grandmother alleged they destroyed the property, and at this point, no one is living in peace in the legal action filed on September 8th. Police and the FBI didn't answer specific questions during Thursday's brief press conference, which ended after about five minutes. That led to a flurry of questions from the public on social media about why Lilani 
wasn't in handcuffs as they shared fears she may flee. Police said they don't believe that she is a flight risk, but they'll likely have her under surveillance, former FBI agent Jennifer Koffendoffer told the U.S. Sun. Simon hasn't been arrested or charged as of Friday morning, and Koffendoffer said police are likely gathering more evidence to ensure a conviction. Quote, they're not done with the investigation yet, the field agent said. They have one opportunity to charge somebody and make those charges stick to get a conviction. Right now, it's all circumstantial. They'll likely go through phone records, searching for the body and waiting for forensic test results before making an arrest. They wanna have all the evidence first. The one-year-old hasn't been seen since October 5th, which is a sh short amount of time to collect and process evidence collected from the house and inside the family pool, according to Coffin Offer. And that is the end of the article. I will continue to give you guys any updates or anything else that comes out about the case. I hope that y'all have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.